Environment artists, especially in AAA studios, often rely on tools which are unassuming on the surface, but essential under the hood. And I think Substance Designer fits squarely into this category. While it doesn't offer the immediate visual excitement of painting directly on a model, lots of people don't know that it has become the backbone of environment art, especially in large-scale productions. In many cases, its procedural, tileable textures allow teams to tackle projects of a scale that would be nearly impossible with traditional hand-painted methods. Also, open-world titles have woven designer into the very fabric of their workflows. This actually shows how it can be used to scale massive environments with endless assets, and why you should think about using it too if you are an environment artist. Talking about assets, let's agree on something. UV mapping sucks, no one likes it, but it has to be done if you want to enjoy all those sweet, sweet, gorgeous looking textures. And here's the thing. UV mapping doesn't have to be painful, especially with the right tools. You can easily speed up your workflow and keep your focus on what's important, making great art. Enter Rhizome UV. Rhizome UV is hands down the best software for working on UVs right now. It offers so many life enhancing features when it comes to packing, stacking, and managing complex layouts. You get tools like auto stacking similar islands, tile and sheet packing for UD workflows, and real time unfolding. And just recently, they added the long awaited GPU acceleration. This makes packing speed and accuracy blazing fast. Depending on your setup, it can be up to 10 times faster. The CPU packer has also been improved, but if you want the best performance, especially on dense meshes, large environments, or scenes with lots of repeating elements, the GPU can cut through them like a hot knife through butter. If you want to try Ryzen UV for free, click the first link in the description down below. So, at the heart of designer's utility is its procedural approach. As you may already expect, textures can be tiled and repeated seamlessly, which is important for surfaces that cover large areas, including floors, walls, and landscapes. You see, before procedural tools such as designer, I mean before it became the standard, hand-painted textures in tools such as Photoshop were the primary method, though they had limitations for large-scale environments. But hand painting remains relevant for stylized games or unique assets. For small projects, this approach could be sufficient. However, with large environments, the repetition becomes apparent. Scaling a texture or adding detail often meant repainting or manually editing multiple bitmaps, which is a process that could slow production significantly. However, Designer changed that by letting you generate textures algorithmically. So now, Complex textures appear to have endless detail that can be created by layering noise patterns, shape generators, and blending nodes. These nodes let the user change the density of fracture, in addition to the width of wooden planks and the granularity of stone by adjusting parameters instead of entirely reworking the textures. The textures then can be exported to any resolution, since they are not photographs, and still maintain fidelity, which allows close detail and distant detail to be viewed simultaneously. To give you an example, Star Citizen, a game with planetary scale terrains, actually emphasized the need for fully tileable textures. Procedural workflows in Designer allow the team to generate varied terrain bases rapidly, while ensuring the textures align correctly across vast distances. As you may know, the game feels endless, and you can only imagine how much work this requires. This level of control and repeatability is something traditional painting will absolutely struggle to achieve if it is not an impossibility. Procedural generation also allows for quick iteration, so adjustments that would have taken hours or days when managing multiple bitmap textures can be applied instantly to a single substance graph and propagate across all instances where that material is used. Another defining feature in Designer is its node-based, non-destructive workflow. You see, Unlike painting directly on a mesh or editing pixel data in Photoshop, Designer lets artists build materials incrementally, connecting nodes that perform specific functions like blending shapes, adding noise, or adjusting color. As you can see, each step is independent, which means changes can be made without overriding previous work. For example, if a brick wall texture is created and later requires twice as large bricks or more weathering, a few parameter adjustments are enough. There is no need to start over 
an artist can experiment freely, exploring multiple variations without the fear of losing the work. An environment artist uses it because they know that adjusting how many bricks are there, the shape of the bricks and so on, and how much damage is there can be done instantly by swiping and tweaking notes, which is invaluable when working under production deadlines. Beyond just basic iteration, Designer allows artists to expose parameters in the material graph. A single substance can become a flexible generator with sliders for dirt, color variation, weathering, or damage. The setup enables teams to produce multiple variations from a single base material. As you may know, modern AAA games rely on modular materials like bricks, concrete, mud, bark, metal, fabric, you name it, which can be applied across multiple assets. Designer allows a material to be developed in isolation, refined, and then deployed across hundreds of surfaces, and any adjustments propagate automatically. Remedy's control provides a clear example. The team developed a brutalist material library with custom nodes to handle nodes, cracks, and micro details. By reusing these generators, they could create significant variation quickly, even with a relatively small team. And here's the thing. Designer is not focused on creating one-off textures. You might ask, what does it do then? Well, it is about establishing systems that can be leveraged across multiple assets and projects, which is critical when scaling productions without sacrificing quality. Another advantage is the compactness of substance designer files. A single file can generate textures and export or even at runtime, reducing the need to manage numerous slightly different bitmap files. And studios integrate substances directly into their game engines, allowing textures to be generated or adjusted dynamically, which is really interesting. And here's another thing. Even without engine integration, maintaining a tidy library of procedural files is far simpler than juggling dozens of PNGs or TIFFs for every minor variation. And looking at actual production examples actually underscores how Designer fits into the AAA workflow. So let me give you some more quick examples. As I said, the control video game relied heavily on Designer for world surfaces. Assassin's Creed Odyssey integrated for large-scale terrain systems, and Star Citizen leveraged procedural workflows to manage planetary textures. Ubisoft Ghost Recon Wildlands, on the other hand, combined Designer with Zebra sculpted terrains to generate curvature and ambient occlusion maps for rocks and environment features. And in many studios, dedicated material or texture artists build designer substances that environment teams can immediately apply. And they know and they are confident that textures will tie correctly and meet the visual direction. For mid-level environment artists, familiarity with designer is increasingly a baseline expectation. Given how much it improves efficiency, in addition to consistency across large projects. And if you're gonna work in the industry, especially as an environment artist, I think this software is now probably a must-know given that it is now the industry standard. Designer's position is further clarified when looked at from a perspective of other software, such as Substance Painter and Quixel Mixer. Painter provides a direct, tactical approach. You paint on a 3D model using brushes, masks, and smart materials. It excels at detailing hero props or unique models, but it isn't designed for creating highly repeatable materials from scratch. An environment artist working on a terrain or trim sheet would turn to designer instead. Mixer occupies a middle ground, blending scan textures from the Megascans library with a layer-based interface that is often easier for newcomers to learn, and Mixer allows procedural noise, masking, and hand-painted touches, making it fast and intuitive for generated realistic surfaces. However, when full procedural control or custom generators are needed, Mixer's capabilities are more limited. Experienced teams often use all three tools in tandem. Designer for base procedural textures, Painter when it comes to per asset detail, and Mixer for quick compositing or scanned base materials. Designer is the most technical one of the three but it is also when teams, whether it be VFX teams or game development teams, create the systems for consistency and the ability to reuse materials. So as you probably tell by now, the procedural depth of designer allows the creative experimentations beyond what scan textures 
or hand painting alone can provide. An artist can generate alien or stylized surfaces, build different custom node generators, and expose parameters for variation across multiple assets. So in a nutshell, the tools inside Designer that can be reused in Engine and across projects is what makes the software powerful, while other software give you intuitive and visually immediate results. Designer's procedural and systematic approach gives you a really powerful tool, which is scalability that is very difficult to replicate with any other tool. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and then we'll see you in the next one.